All righty, welcome everyone to the Brothers Commonplace, a comedy and crime podcast where we cover monsters, murders, mysteries, and more. Some more. And before we get into today's topic, I want y'all to meet just my boy. It's the gruesome twosome today, baby. It's everyone's favorite pairing. No, it's not those socks you stole from your ex. <laughs> <laughs> It's Tooth. Hell yeah, dude. I like that, Tooth. And it is your boy, Kev, a.k.a. the Dirty Dog, a.k.a. the Washington football team. (laughs) Oh, fuck yeah. Dude, that is so fucking good, man. Oh, hell yeah. uh, I love it. I love the Washington football team. It is, like, I understand that it's like a placeholder name for now. but is it? The name is so fucking bad and dumb. That I guarantee even the Native Americans are like, all right, let's just go back to the Redskins. I'm yeah. that's a little bit better at least. Nah, I mean that's obviously a joke, but fuck, that name sucks. I hope he like just signs it off on something being more racist. It's like fuck it, dude. I kind of wish, like, <sighs> I'm torn on their name because like I see it, I can see it as being racist. But I can see it being like Wait, a Red tribute skins? or celebrating, yeah, like how the Indians, like there was literally an Indian on the team in the very way back then. Like, yeah, but I'm sure the Indian didn't create the racist as fuck stereotype. Yeah, <laughs> Indian mascot. <laughs> but you could also just call it a character if you want. But anyway, yeah, dude, I was hoping Dan Snyder would be like, oh, Nike, you. You pulled out of the Redskins name? That's dang Nike. Where are you gonna oh. I can't believe you hate this. What about all the little fucking Chinese kids you slay? Oh yeah, owners? dude. Oh dude, yeah. I wish he would have just fucking like went on a fucking Hogan Hogan rant about it. Oh I know, dude. That would have been so good. All these Nike all these Nike motherfuckers making these shoes, brother. I'll tell you what they do. They made trash, brother. <laughs> because they have slaves too, brother. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess we'll see. I like how um, uh, they're going to be in, like, Madden. It's just the Washington football team and shit. But, but all righty, I hope you sons of guns, that's right, sons of guns, whatever that means, are ready to talk about a hardcore one this week. Things are going to get fucked up, a little bit crazy, a little bit gross, just like the way that Ellen DeGeneres treats her employees. Things are going to get uh, things are gonna get a bit naughty in this one. So that oh, is right. God. Tonight, I'm and, just imagine. Yeah, I'm just imagining Ellen DeGeneres, just like I hate like, Ellen. They said she's mean. They never said she did like sexual things to them or nothing like that. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what is that? Is there something about her doing sexual stuff to people? No, no. I'm, oh, okay. I'm imagining like that. Like, oh, you're just, imagining it. Nice. She's just like, oh, hey, Aaron, can you get me another water, please? <laughs> but I heard like employees are told like, yeah, when when Ellen's here, just don't look at her and don't talk to her. She doesn't want to be talked to. <laughs> I guess she's just a huge piece of shit. I mean, I don't know, but like obviously not the like child pedophilia or like raping people or crazy shit. Yeah. But man, just being so having so much power where you can do that almost seems kind of funny. What like, the fuck are you talking about, too? What? Like. What, every time he walks by, look at him with crossed eyes. Because if he looks at you and your eyes aren't fucking crossed, he's gonna slap the shit out of you. Okay. Like I would, I would abuse my power in such a fucking stupid way. Like salute him. He <laughs> salute thinks he's him. a general. Just salute him. Oh, Even that'd though be cool. he might come up to you and pretend like you're a part in the army, just pretend you are. Or, or he's gonna beat the shit out of you. He's gonna have you fired. Hell He'll yeah. Never work in this fucking town again. <laughs> So tonight and tonight only, submitted for the approval of the Brothers Commonplace, I bring you the tale of Joseph Collinger. Have you heard of Joseph Collinger, Tooth? No. All right, this is good. This is a pretty fucked up one, dude. I'm surprised. I mean, I've never heard of him before either, so I'm surprised once you hear about the shit he did. What's his, uh, what's his middle name? Miles will go with the name shit. <laughs> Was his middle name Community? <laughs> Oh shit. Holy shit. Oh, uh, that's a good one, dude. Um yeah. let's see. Um Joseph uh never mind. Collinger doesn't even sound like cylinder. I was gonna say graduated oh. Collinger, but that's not funny. Um Joseph dude, twelve spe- how about Joseph twelve month Collinger? <laughs> <laughs> 
Joseph next year's calendar. Oh. <laughs> Dude, his fucking... Like, minus the C, his name is probably... You put it with an H, it's probably how you spell that fucking weird store that, like, 17-year-old boys shop at. Wait, which store? Hollister. Oh, Hollister? Hollister. Yeah, George... Ho- What's his name? Is that still a store? Ho- well, I guess there's no malls, so why would there be? Yeah. I mean, there's still 17-year-old kids, so... Yeah, that's true. They do still exist. So our <laughs> sources for this episode, we have Murderpedia, which I know that that's just like a list of different things that people can put on there. But I, I pulled from sources on there that we also list. Um, we have New York Times, AP News, Serial Killer Files video on YouTube by Rob Gavigan. And there's also a document I found that has information researched and summarized by Christopher Greenleaf, Amanda Hall, and Jenna Hafey. They are the Department of Psychology at Radford University. And, oh, shit, I just looked back and you're holding those cats. Damn, Tooth, getting the pussy, baby. But um, that document I found, they use, like, the crime library and something else. They had their sources listed, but I couldn't access them, unfortunately. Oh, damn. So today we're going to be talking about Joseph Lee Brenner III, a.k.a. the Shoemaker. And, um... Wait, Brenner? Yes. He's what about ado- Collinger? He gets adopted pretty soon. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, this is a this is a sad one. There's a lot of fucked up stuff going on. Our main guy here, he never really had a chance at having a normal life. He's pretty much dealt the shit boot immediately, which uh, fits his job since he was a shoemaker. Uh, it's like he was forever spending his life trying to clean the shit boot that couldn't be cleaned. <laughs> Dude, he's uh, I don't know how much I want to say of this. But he makes the boots, and then he sells them in the store where our hashtag wild man Jake works. Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah, he does, dude. Dude, With I... Fucking mustache. Oh. I love getting snaps of Jake, which I haven't gotten in, like, a long time. But he just be oh, like, yeah. hey, what's up, dude? I'm just sitting here drinking my fucking Voss water. <laughs> Voss like, water is the fucking best. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, that's the entire snap. <laughs> and it's the best. So, all right, Tooth, before we jump into this case, you got anything you want to mention or talk about? Oh, I was going to finish that Hogan thing earlier. Uh, when Daniel Snyder, the Redskins owner, is doing his Hogan promo. Yeah. And he, like in the other Hogan promo, he talks about, well, my two buddies here, Hall and Nash. Well, oh, yeah. Daniel Snyder is like, well, my two friends here, <laughs> Deshaun Jackson and Steven Jackson. Oh, my God, <laughs> dude. Hell, yeah. These are my real friends. Hey, did you see the, ah, uh, oh, fuck, who was it? Lou Williams, I think. Oh, yeah. That is so fucking good. Dude, That's personal so... reasons. Yeah, so do you want to explain that real quick? And then we'll get into this, get into the case. But this is so good. This is really good. NBA Clippers guard Lou Williams was told the team that he wanted to leave for personal reasons. Uh, I don't know if it was a day later or that <sighs> night even. He was Instagram video lived at a strip club. <laughs> and and he's wearing a mask that the teams, all the players got while they were in the Orlando bubble, which is where like they can't leave because they're being quarantined while playing there. Yeah. And like the guy he was with is like, no, nah, man, this is an old picture. I just posted it because I missed him. But he's wearing the mask that they got in Orlando. <laughs> yeah, just like less than a week ago, too. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So, all righty, here we go. On to the case. Uh, Joseph Collinger, he was born December 11th, 1935 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His parents were Joseph Lee Brenner II and his wife, Judith. But in uh, just two short years, in December of 1937, little Joey III would be placed in a foster home once his father decided to up and leave Judith. Dude. Yeah, based on the name Judith, I figured she would have been the one leaving. You know, oh. <laughs> are you getting where I'm getting at? Uh, wait, what are you talking about? I think Hitler liked her name a lot. Oh, Jew death. Oh, too. Come I, on, hey, man. Hey, I don't support it. I just find the name. That's it. Mine is because Judith sound like Judas. <laughs> oh, so, oh, hey, fuck yeah. We both suck, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hey, laugh at the dark stuff. So in January of 1938, 
He was put in a boarding home where he would only see his mother once a week if he was lucky, which caused him to develop sev- which I'm sorry, which caused this him to birth? That was in 1938. He was born at the end of 37. No, okay. I'm sorry. Let me go back. He 35. Was, he was born in 35. In yeah. 37, his parents split up because his dad left him. So he was okay. living in a foster home. But his, uh, That young, that sucks. So his mom would come and visit him, but only see him like once a week. And that caused him to develop separation anxiety. Okay. And uh, little Joey would then be adopted in October of 1939 to two Austrian immigrants by the name of Stephen and Anna Collinger. So that's where he gets uh, his last okay. name. Austrian. Little Joey, huh? Little Joey. Uh. <laughs> Joe and Joey Records. Oh, God, so fucking good. You know, I'm just going to leave it at that. All righty. Joseph Usler. Oh, shit. So, yeah, two Austrian immigrants that, um, as you can will soon learn, didn't even want a kid. So why they adopted one, I have no idea. And if you're wondering if this family was nice, loving, and stable, just an all-around great family to grow up with, the answer is no. And we're about to get into that. So, Who adopts a kid just to, like, torture them or beat them or even, yeah. like... The fucking parents from Matilda. Like, I understand getting too many chicken chalupas at fucking Taco Bell and, like, oh, no, I have too many. Shit. And, like, and mistreating those, but a person. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. It's I I don't know. Uh, two years after he is adopted, though, the actual adoption becomes official, which that would be in 1940, and that's when his mother tries to bribe the Callinger family into giving her money, but that doesn't work out, and she gets nothing. I don't I don't know why that's. Wait, what family? The Collinger family. Uh, oh. So his okay. his real mom tries to get okay. money out of him. So his new family, the Collingers, they were extremely abusive towards him. He would suffer severe beatings at their hands. He would be flogged with uh, one of those cat of nine tails thingies. Uh, they would even beat him with a hammer. And uh, Wait, is that nine tails thing real? Yeah, dude, one of those fucking whip. <laughs> it's either the whip or the Pokemon. I'm not sure. One of them oh was whipping God, his yes. ass. Uh, but yeah, they would also beat him with a fucking hammer. And then, of course, he was constantly verbally abused, which included, quote, Repeated threats of emasculation. This kid is like four and five. And What's emasculation? Like calling him a pussy? Pretty much. Yeah. Or like, because I would say this is 1940, dude. It's probably way worse shit. They do weird things. They talk about his penis in weird ways. You'll find out oh, later. Here we go. I can't remember uh, exactly what, but I think they may, like they tell him straight up, like like the doctor said he had a small dick or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag fucking wild man uh, holy shit dude i hope all right i hope they i'm on their side <laughs> i hope they like slipped a doctor like like a 50 cent piece or something the doctor's like and by the way little joey that is a abnormally small penis you have there and there's like god so uh, fucking good so he got to keep his name joey huh joe collinger yeah you keep well yeah you keep your first name you don't Oh, I don't know. Like, when you said he's adopted and they're whipping him and everything, I thought they were changing his name to Toby. Oh, Toof. Toof. Hey. I, don't know, I don't know if I can keep that in, dude. That's not a bad one. Real, I mean, it, it, uh, the show was. Yeah. Historically. Yeah. But yeah I'll, probably, I'll probably bleep the name. Okay. I'll, I'll keep it in the video, though. I keep everything in the video because I don't feel like editing the video. Fuck yeah, so, there we go. Hashtag wild man. Um, but yeah, he was punished for even like the most minor things. And keep in mind, he's just a young child, too, while this is all happening. And sometimes they starve him and they lock him in closets, like in the fucking chokey, like in Matilda. I don't know why Matilda keeps getting brought up, but yeah. Matilda. <laughs> and now, there's not like a ton of information about his childhood, um, but the information we do have is from that Radford University Department of Psychology report that we mentioned in our sources. And they got their information from Murders, A Family Affair, and then also Crime Library and the book The Shoemaker. So I wasn't able to access all those. So all the information that they got from there, I'm pulling from their uh, their report. Okay. So at the age of five, quote, anytime I mention an age, it's usually from their report. 
At the oh, age okay. of five, quote, Joseph hears the F word from uh, neighbors, from some neighborhood kids. Um, I it, Just me and you are walking by, and someone yelled out and called us fags. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, Joseph hears the F hey, word. It's the, hey, it's that word that doctor calls me every time I <laughs> show my penis. <laughs> Uh, but Joseph hears the F word from some neighborhood kids. He is beaten by his father with a leather strap and then by his mother with a wooden spoon just because he heard it. Didn't even know what it was. Dude, it's the fucking wooden spoon that all the grandmas have hit, hung up on their wall. Fuck yeah, dude. Holy shit, yes. And uh, he's grounded for a week. During the week, the beatings continue and he is never told what the word means or why he's being punished. So he just told him he heard this word. Some neighborhood kids yelled it at him and, or yelled it or something. And then his parents beat him for a week, and he has no idea why. Dude, so, this sucks so bad. Yeah. So don't get me wrong. This guy does a lot of fucked up shit. But, I mean, he had zero chance of having a normal life. when he's. And this is 1940. He's just fucking five. Yeah, he's five, dude. Uh, September 16th, 1943. Joseph oh, okay. leaves St. Mary's Hospital after surgery to repair a hernia. He has a hernia, dude, at fucking six years old. <laughs> Carry those bricks to your room, boy. His parents tell him that the doctor also gave him surgery to keep his, quote, bird small and make it not work. No what? way. Yeah. No way. Yeah, dude, they... is his dad Joe Jackson? <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, dude. No, we didn't get first place. We don't want that color TV. Take it back. <laughs> Oh my God! Wait, yeah. what is that? Um, my mom used to watch the Jackson Five like series, like not the series, but like the five part movie, like every week. There's a okay. part where they win a contest, or no, they get like second place in a contest, and the prize is like this big fucking color TV. But since it's not first place, they don't. The dad doesn't let him take Fuck it. Yeah, legend. But yeah, dude, this doctor. The parents tell him, yeah, the doctor gave you a special surgery so your dick will stay small and so it will never work. Well, why would you tell that to why? a six-year-old? Why do you get, what do you gain from telling a six-year-old that? Like, okay, this is 1940 through 43. We're in fucking World War, wait, this is in America, right? Yeah, this is in Pennsylvania. Well, he was born in Pennsylvania. I think this is in Pennsylvania. Just as long as it's America. We're going through a fucking world war right now. Like, money is short. And they're like, oh, man, we should we spend money on, like, food or anything? Or should we just pay for this dick-minimizing dick, dick surgery? Let's yeah, see. okay. What are we going to do today? Well, let's see. We can uh, we can try our bet. We can collect some bottles, return to the store to get some money. Um, we could make up just a plan to get the doctor make fun of our kid's dick. Yeah, let's go with that one. Let's, let's go with the dick jokes. Imagine he's like working in a factory and he's like about to clock out at 40 hours. And he's like thinking like, if I just work a little bit of overtime, I can afford that dick small surgery. <laughs> the dick small surgery. I'm actually, I'm willing to believe, like I, I love my parents, my mom, I love my dad, rest in peace. But based on the penis I'm working with, it kind of seems like they had that surgery done for me. <laughs> Because even ballads already put me to shame. Oh my god, hell yeah! <laughs> but, hey, they say they say the kids take after the grandpa. <laughs> like people ask, like, are you a shower or a grower? Oh, and it's like, there's got to be a third option because I'm neither of those. Is there just like a, just like a little caterpillar? <laughs> Is there like a cat it, caterpillar I dangler? It, I know it doesn't rhyme, but like, are you a shower or a grower? No, sir. <laughs> No, none of those. I'm like, you know, at the very bottom of like the Arby's container of curly fries, sometimes you get like one of those little guys, like those little old witch's fingernails. One of those. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So, not, uh, not even yours is half as stale though. <laughs> so, the reason he had that hernia is because three weeks before he had that surgery, a girl just fucking kicked him real hard in the dick. Like, just oh. kicked him in the fucking nuts. And he claimed he didn't do anything to deserve it, but his parents were still like, this is your fault, and fucking punished him for it. Dude, what about Charles Schultz basing Charlie Brown's life around this kid? <laughs> dude, for real. For real, dude. And instead of pulling the football away, they just make fun of his small dick. <laughs> they pull the big dick away? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, you'll never have that. Go to the chokey. <laughs> But yeah, his his adoptive parents never let him really be a kid at all. They didn't let him celebrate his birthday. He wasn't allowed to ride a bike. He couldn't hang out with friends. His dad would make him hang out with him after school instead. 
learning the family business of working in the shoe shop. So it's like, you just treat this kid like absolute garbage. Why do you want him to take over your family business? God. None of this makes sense. Like, I'm not trying to do too much foreshadowing, but I think I'm on his side. <laughs> oh, for, for up until, yeah, you're going to be on his side for a while because it's like he's just a kid getting the f- fucking shit beat out of him. You know, I'll only be on his side if he does what I want him to do. This kid, up until he does all the bad shit, he might be the first juggalo. Because he gets treated like a fucking juggalo, dude. Dude, he does his name Miss Joey. He's a floob. He's yeah. a floob. Um, age seven, Joseph steals a book of prayers from the school. Um, his punishment was to kneel on sandpaper for an hour every night. Um, unless you're moving, is that that bad? I'm sure it sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, if if you can either have the sandpaper knees or the little dick, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, age eight is a tough year for him. Things get even more fucked up right here. Um, he gets hit in the head four times with a hammer by his mother. Do you want to know why? Guess the reason why. Because his school, do you want to guess? You want me to tell you? I I was going to say he dropped a dinner plate or something. Uh, no, his school was doing a field trip to the zoo and he asked his mother if he could go. (gasps) Fuck yeah, dude. And so she beats him in the, in the head with a hammer four times. How's he not dead? I don't know. He, I don't oh, know. Jesus um, Christ, dude. And then also I'm right here, here on Tom and Jerry is uh one time he ran into the house and uh, he like beat his head against walls and tables because uh, his mom was chasing him around with a broom, beating him. So he's trying to run and get away and just he kept running into shit and getting even more more hurt. Um. This is also at the age of eight. This sucks. Um, A group of older boys hold him at knife point, and then one of them gives him a head. What? Yeah. Quote. Wait a minute. Here's the quote. Joseph is held at knife point by older boys while one performs oral sex on him. This is like... this. Uh, What is that? None of this makes sense. This seems like a book of lies. Yeah. Um, so there's three older boys that did that to him. And since Joseph, anytime he does anything wrong, even if he does something that's not wrong, he gets the fucking shit beat out of him. So this is something he's like, well, I can't tell my parents about this. Yeah. Uh, like it'll be even worse. So his parents are never told this. Yeah. He's eight years old. (sighs) Like I'm going to, I don't know. What is it tooth? I'm not going to say I don't believe him, but I mean, I don't, I don't know. That's crazy. That's just crazy. But it's 1943. Everything's crazy then. Yeah. So maybe that was happening to everyone. (laughs) I'm sorry. That was stupid. That's not even funny. Uh, Um, yeah, that's fucked up. So sorry about that. I just can't even believe that, that that's real. Like, I mean, it probably is real. Uh, these dude, these next ridiculous, these next events they all happen between the ages of eleven and thirteen. Uh, January nineteen forty seven, he starts stealing money from his parents so that he can give it to neighbor neighborhood kids so that they can all go to the movies with him. Like that's how he's making friends. He's stealing money from his parents, giving them out to the neighborhood kids, and saying, "Now that you all have money, let's all go to the movies." <laughs> This is so sad and pathetic, dude. It's so God. pathetic, man. God, dude, I don't even want to. Sl- <laughs> hey, let's be honest. Hey. Hashtag wild man on that move. I Fuck that's yeah. a fucking that's a sad, lonely bottom of the shit boot. Hashtag wild man move to do. I don't know why he needed money for those moviegoers because he already had a couple of friends who did some favors <laughs> for him for free. So oh God, too. Um, this is where that part gets sadder. Oh, his parents find out that he's stealing money and they punish him by turning on the stove and putting his fingers on it. And uh, he went through the pain and uh, that like wasn't enough. He's like, well, I need friends and I like hanging out with friends and going to the movies with them. So he kept doing it. He kept doing it. The punishment for that was to get his hands burned on the stove and he would just keep enduring the pain and doing it so he could hang out with people. So he like... They knew he's still money. He's just like, here's my hand. Time to burn it again. I guess he ended so it's up. Almost like, 
a barter system? Like, he pretty much, uh, I think he does it like five times. But, dude, you know what his mom tells him when she does it, why she's doing it? Quote, to burn the demon thief out of the fingers that steal. Fuck yeah. I will say, that's fucked up and crazy, but that is kind of, that is kind of a badass thing to say. It's were time... they, like, I don't know if it lists it, but were they, like, overtly religious or something, or, like... Um, you know, I'm not quite sure, dude. Just nuts. Just <laughs> fucking nuts, dude. Um, I will say that some of this stuff, yeah, it gets fucked up. He does have a couple hashtag wild man moves, like that one. That's, I mean, that's a yeah. sad thing to do, but, yeah, he gets real fucked up later on. Uh, 1949, at the age of 13, he uh, he cuts a hole in his wall for masturbation. Uh, he uses pictures of naked men and women as well as needing a knife nearby to achieve orgasm. A knife? Yeah. In order for him to get aroused, he has to stab the pictures with a knife while jacking off. Whoa, dude. That's so Bringing back some memories, cool. too. That's so <laughs> fucking cool. What are you gonna sue him for stealing your oh. stealing that straight out of your fucking diary too? <laughs> Dude, I like that he invented a glory hole for himself. See, I was confused. Is he he's fucking the wall? Is that what that means? He cut a hole in the quote is cuts a hole in his wall for masturbation, uses pictures of naked men and and women, as well as needing a knife nearby to achieve orgasm. Soon, yeah. he has to cut and stab pictures to become aroused. That's at 13, dude. Dude, imagine, like, you know, like, smegma dick cheese. Now imagine you have drywall plaster on there, too. It's like, at 13, man? That's insane. I could jack off to anything at 13. Yeah, I don't blame him on that part. I even probably did, pictures, dude. pictures, whatever. Um... I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not gonna say I jacked off to it, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't achieve a full aroused boner from the gold member VHS tape, just the cover of it. Fucking Beyonce's oh, yeah. tits. She looks good in that, dude. Yeah. I remember looking at that and just getting a straight up boner, and being like, "Wow, if I could go home right now and whack it, I would." Hey, why do you think I kept scared shitless around for so long? <laughs> Um, also at the age of 13, he persuades his parents to send him to camp for two weeks at camp. He steals a scope off of a rifle and takes it apart and he keeps the lens because it makes things bigger so he can look through the lens. He stole that. Um, <laughs> does he look at his, his dick? dick? He's got to, <laughs> Fuck dude. Yeah, man. Been there, brother. Been there, dude. Um, all, and like I said, all these that are, have the dates and ages are from that one psychology report. Uh, or that the university psychology students put together. So 1949, this is also at the age of 13. Ten days after re after returning from camp, he hears voices telling him to cut somebody. He boarded a... Real quick, real quick before you talk about the voices. Yeah. I hear voices in my head. <laughs> How the fuck did his parents allow him to go to camp? I don't like, know. Like, for real. For real. I have no idea. He asked to go on a school trip, school trip, and they what? Be, be, they beat, she beat him with, him with a, a hammer. hammer. Yeah. Hammer beat. Can I yeah. go to a campground? Yeah, fuck it. Why not? Yeah, that's fine, you. dude. Yeah, we, we love, love you. you. <laughs> so at the age of 13, 10 days after returning from camp, he hears voices telling him to cut somebody. He boarded a city bus with a knife. He saw a boy get off the bus, and he led him into the woods near a stream and he ordered the boy to take off his pants at knife point. Sound familiar? Jesus Christ, dude. He then ran off into the woods, and he never harmed the boy after ordering him to take off his pants. He did this three more times in the next few months. His last victim, Joe, reenacts what had happened to him with the older boys, which means he, uh, he holds that guy at knife point, and then he sucks his dick. What the yeah. fuck? It says, quote, the last victim, Joe reenacts what had happened to him with the older boys, and he puts the other boy's penis in his mouth and bites it while he holds the other boy at knife point. <laughs> fuck, dude. This is so good. That's fuck. Dude, this is, this is like that fucking... Uh, That's fuck, dude. It's that like Bruce Willis movie, Hopper or Ho Hooper or the fuck. Uh, is it Looper? <laughs> Looper, where he like meets his future self, like... 
he realizes the pe- like those gangs of kids that sucked his dick was him. It's like and he just does it to other people. It's like if I went into a bank with a duffel bag and a gun, I'm like everybody fucking down, and I just start handing them all my money, and then I leave. Yeah, <laughs> you know, dude. This I is. Heard that, uh, imagine he like was- a vigilante Batman who just goes around at night and like like backs you up into an alley, then sucks your dick. <laughs> I want someone to draw that. Will someone draw me as Batman sucking I, bad I guys' seen, dicks? <laughs> I haven't seen it, but isn't that just what the Ben Affleck Batman does? <laughs> Dude, I'm not going to lie. I love, I like that movie a lot. People give it a lot of shit. I still haven't seen it. I like the Affleck Batman. There's some dumb stuff in it. Like, there's a lot of dumb stuff in it, but I like the action scenes are pretty good. I've never seen the Justice League movies, though, so that I can't talk about. So uh, when he makes this kid go in an alley and forces him to let him perform fellatio on him. It's in the he, woods, uh, but yeah. In the woods. He uh, he hands him a piece of paper with some lyrics on it for this kid to sing while uh, he's doing the deed. And they, he's like, I don't I don't know how to sing this right, so I'm just going to sing it in my high-pitched voice. What goes around, goes around, goes around, goes around. <laughs> reach around, yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, um. You don't have to say anything while I suck your dick. <laughs> I hold my knife, yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to bite your penis hard. Um, But one good thing does happen to him at the age of 13, though, too. This might be the best thing that's ever happened to him in his entire life. He gets the lead role in a school play as Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. <laughs> Dude, this that is the, I don't know how this seems the most unbelievable. That is the best thing that has ever happened to this guy. Getting to play Ebenezer Scrooge in a Christmas carol in a school play. So fucking stupid. <laughs> this is the highlight. This is it. This is the peak of the mountain. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, he actually ends up doing a really good job. So good that he thinks that he he's like, you know, I want to be an actor. And then I've read different accounts of, of what happens with his parents. Like one one source said that his parents, they, they let him do, they're like, okay, you can do some more theater stuff and acting. And like the Rob Gavigan YouTube video mentions that he's only allowed to attend the theater on Saturdays. Okay. And then another source says that his parents just straight up laugh in his face and tell him that they will have nothing to do with him be, becoming an actor. Okay, I was about to ask if his parents are... It seems like his parents are kind of letting up on the punishment, maybe? But, so, like... I mean, the second one sounds more believable, where they just laugh in his face. Yeah, totally. But at the age of 14, the next year, he does meet a girl at the theater, and her name is Hilda Bergman, and they begin dating. Hell yeah. And a real real quick question, Jeremiah. Do you think his parents were supportive of this? Um, he was when he told them that he held her at knife point and licked the clitoris. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Uh, no, fuck no, they weren't uh, supportive of this. They told him to break it off, tell Hilda to fuck off and get out of here. So Joseph, he hears their message, but he scrambles it up a little bit because after hearing that, he does in fact fuck Hilda, and then he gets the hell out of there with her. So at the age of fifteen, he is dating and banging Hilda, and like all this is against his parents' wishes. So uh, he's yeah. He wait. He gets out of there. Like leaves the house. Yeah, he like, gets his own, he gets his own place at fifteen years old. I mean, that's. But, I mean, you can't at fifteen. It's nineteen forty-seven. You but, can do uh, what the fuck ever. But yeah, so something weird happens though too. Okay, uh, quote: Joseph is told by God. This is at fifteen that his mission is to heal and save people through their feet. So got a little bit of Dan Schneider going on right here at Nickelodeon. Fuck yeah. um, he would then go on to create iCarly. I'm just joking. That's still oh Dan Schneider. Um, but uh, he conducts over 40,000 experiments between 1951 and 1972 due to his vision. I don't know what experiments are. I mean, he's just cleaning shoes and shit. I don't know what. I didn't find more details about that part, so I don't know. Dude, what does Whitey from Me, Myself, and Irene do? Uh... I, I just imagine him making, like, artificial limbs. <laughs> yeah. That's how I, I see this kid as Whitey. As Whitey? He, do, he's, he, he does not look like him at all, but... Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, does he look like this, then? No, I wish. Um, 
So the yes, yes, man. So also at the age of 15, like we mentioned a little bit, uh, Joseph, quote, Joseph moves into his own place, but he's still working at his father's shoe shop. So, yeah. He and, he and Hilda are still together and frequently having sex. Uh, for the first time, he has friends. He begins playing poker and pool, and he also begins drinking. Hashtag wild man, brother. Fuck yeah, he's becoming cultured. <laughs> does he always, to keep himself sane, does he always say that rhyme to himself? Uh, uh. <laughs> Joseph shines shoes by dad's shoe shack. <laughs> 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 I can't even say uh. it. Uh. I said, why's a brother got to spit shine your shoes? He don't have to. It could be a Chinaman. <laughs> what, uh, what was that dude's name? The I am a motherfucker, that bus guy? Oh, uh, it's the Danny Trejo movie. Yeah, but I mean, uh, like, the real guy, though. What's his uh, name? I know. I don't know. Amber Lamps. Amber Lamps. Um, Bring Amber yeah. Lamps. Um, but, yeah, so things are kind of starting to go well for him. He's got his own place. He's got a girl he's banging. He's ha- He has some friends. Um, at 17 years old, he drops out of school, which I think he only completed, like, nine years of schooling. So I think he was in 10th grade. But after he drops out, he starts working full. 10th grade at 17, huh? <laughs> well, I wouldn't be surprised. This dude's, uh, yeah. he does take an IQ test later. Um, Fuck yes. He's a wild man. <laughs> and sorry for my language, but he's like just barely not retarded. Like that's not supposed so to be So are mean. we sure that this still isn't Dan Schneider? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, at, uh, he drops out of school. And after he drops out, he starts working full time at his father's shoe shop. And then shortly after that, he marries the love of his life. He marries Hilda at the age of 17. And wow. Yeah, so fuck yeah, they get married, they have two children, and they live happily ever after. No, they don't. No, no that, they don't. Yeah, that's, nope. not, that's not true, because uh, she actually leaves him for another man two years after they get married. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. Are the two kids things true, though? Yeah, he has two kids, but the sad part oh, is fuck. is uh, the reason she leaves him is because he was like high, he was very abusive towards her. And shocker, I mean that's shocker. I'm not defending him at all, but I mean that's all yeah. he knows is abuse. <laughs> Pretty fucking much. Yeah, dude, but that's a crazy fucking life. All this happened before 21 years old. All this shit. Hey, hey, honey, home from. Uh... <laughs> Hey, honey, home from dad's shop. You know, he just got done uh, putting a knife to my throat and told me how piece of shit I am. Um, uh, I'm going to go fuck the wall real quick before I <laughs> And if you got anything to say about it, woman, uh-huh. I got a knife for you, too. Oh, God. Damn, Tooth. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I hope he does still fuck the wall. <laughs> Dude, what about that, like, that, you know that meme, like, Kyle always punches holes in drywall? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like a bunch of holes in drywall. It's like this uh, ain't no Kyle. He he's Joey. like he's like making he's making Hilda like clean the windows, and he's like to the window, and then he leaves to the wall <laughs> to go fuck the wall. <laughs> so at 21 years old, that is the age of Joseph in 1957 when he is hospitalized with a suspected brain lesion. But uh, tests would actually reveal that he actually has a psychopathological nervous uh, disorder. Oh, wow. That's. I wonder if he just, like, developed that over time or if he was born with it. <laughs> dude, he's beaten <laughs> so fucking much, dude. Like, God. Yeah. And then on April 20th, blaze it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, fuck yeah. On uh, April 20th of 1958, at the age of 22... Joseph would once again find a lady friend and get married, Tooth. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm sure that's going to go well. You know what? Real quick. Are we going to talk about his ex-wife and the kids at all? No, I don't really know anything. Most of his you family doesn't. After everything, she said he was abusive, but at least there was no reports of him molesting or murdering the kids or beating the kids, I guess. So. Well, yeah, that's true. He didn't murder those kids. Oh, God damn it. Well, I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll God find out damn. what happens. Uh, we'll he's s- like, damn. That, she's like, Helga was my white whale, the one that got away. I didn't get a chance to kill her and fuck her in the wall yet. I'm still. 
I'm still chasing. Like, he, uh, every time he gets a new house, he drills a hole in it to fuck. <laughs> and, like, they're not as, it's not as good as he hopes it'll be. So he's just always chasing that fucking, that white dragon dude, fucking new holes. <laughs> oh, dude, what about he lied about why his dick's so short? It's not because of that. It's because, like, one day he accidentally stuck it and found the stud. <laughs> Uh, so all right so he finds a new lady he gets married and uh, that would uh lead directly to him burning down his own house so that he could get sixteen hundred dollars from fire insurance fuck yeah hey why didn't he just wait 50 years for a stimulus check (laughs) 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 fucking idiot (laughs) sixteen hundred bucks dude he burns down his house uh, for, uh, what year is this? Nineteen <clears throat> like fifty three. Yeah, let's see, nineteen fifty eight. Money uh, converted into nineteen fifty eight years. Eight point nine two. What? All right. It's money now. Then is a uh, eight thousand. No, no, no. Oh. In other words, $1 in 1958 is equivalent to purchasing power of $8.92. Hmm. So that's a decent amount of money. So 8.92 times, you said 1600 Yeah. 14000 Um. Yeah, he burns down his own house, and he would then be committed to a state hospital after he attempts suicide at the age of 23. Okay. And, uh, and then we have a gap here. That is until the age of 29, and that's when he sets fire to his house again. And then at 31... So he spends, like, what, probably like a year in that in- mental institution, then he gets, just gets out? Yeah, maybe. Like, between 23 and 29, we don't really know what happens. Okay. But, um, yeah, at, uh, at 29 years old, he burns his... He sets fire to his house again. And then at 31 years old, he, uh, he also sets fire to his house again. Uh, he ends up setting his house on fire, like, four times trying to get insurance money. Dude, this is so fucking good. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, we'll talk about it later. He lives above his fucking, his shoe shop. Wait, what? Yeah. Like, I, he lives. <laughs> this dude's so fucking. He is the first juggler. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. He's um, got to be the dumbest motherfucker. <laughs> so, yeah, ah. he, he set fire to his house like four times, and it, he's really starting to lose it even more now, in case you can't tell. Dude, it's almost like life is Usain Bolt, and he has to race it. <laughs> and they blindfold him and then turn him around on the track. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then uh, when they fire the gun for the race, they aim it at him. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he said, especially after his first marriage fell apart, that's when he started getting like super stressed out about everything. And that's what was like oh, making man. his condition work. <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting, that's, not, that's when it all started. Uh, he's like not fucking the walls or getting, or forcing people to let you suck their dick, getting <laughs> beat in the head and shit with hammers. None of that. Um, but yeah. Uh, with his new wife, he ends up having five kids with her. So, no fucking way. So he has, Jesus Christ. What is he fucking Chad? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, not, this is like the fucking 1970s Dwight Howard that was. Oh my God. About. Yes. Um, but yeah, he's got seven kids total, dude. And uh, all this stuff next. Ha- oh, so we actually had zero kids with that second female. No, he had he had two with his first wife and five yeah. with his second. Oh, not wife. Uh, I thought you said he had another girlfriend or something. Oh yeah, that became his wife. Oh okay. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> dude, what if uh, after the fucking hammer he started talking like that? That'd be awesome, dude. Do you want to be my wife? <laughs> uh, so all this next up happens in 1972, and that is when Joseph is 36 years old. His oldest daughter, she had ran away from home, so he punishes her by uh, by branding her with a hot iron. <laughs> God damn, I'm not laughing at that. What the fuck? Dude, uh, I'm just laughing at someone with, like, split personalities. One's normal and the other one's Borat. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> like imagine if like god dude i would laugh every fucking time oh yeah dude hey honey uh, is the salt is the salt ready is it nice <laughs> uh, yeah i um i'm i'm okay this dinner looks looks amazing uh baby it looks so good um, I got my plate here with my food on it. I got my glass of my glass of milk. I always have a glass of cold milk with my dinner. I got my spoon, my fork, my knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Um, but yeah, things get real fucked up here too. Um, yeah, you said he branded his daughter. Yeah, he brands his daughter with a hot iron. Okay. And then uh, a week later, quote. Uh, Joseph is arrested for child abuse charges. After three of his children go to the police station, they accuse their father of abusing them. Both Joseph Collinger and his wife said that the children had run away and uh, they denied the abuse charges. And Joseph, he was found competent to stand trial after a psychological examination for that. So, Who is it done by his fucking dad? <laughs> <laughs> um, after after he does that an IQ test, they learn that he had an IQ of eighty two, and according to a quick Google search, ninety to one ten is average. So eighty to eighty nine is below average. So Joseph is just barely hanging on at the bottom of the below average IQ scale. Hashtag wild man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a, I'm surprised it's not worse. Yeah, honestly. Like, like just below, like, the fact that he's in the below average is, like, really well. Like, that's kind of incredible. Like, it's kind Dude, of I, impressive that he is that smart. <laughs> that he is, is an this, 82. Is, <laughs> is this IQ from then? Like, that's the scale then? Because I swear I read an article where, like, the average Amish person's intelligence was, like, 62 to 64. No, it's not, dude. Yeah, it's stupid. There's, like, a billion different um, IQ test scales. I really don't know how they work. Okay. Like, how it, most of them are just, like, patterns and memorization. I, I don't really fully understand. What if it's just so low because, like, Amish really don't know that much? You're like, all right, um... All right, Amish man. Um, they're like, how many buttons on there on a traditional old school flip cell phone? He's like, what? Uh, I don't fucking know a button. Uh, two by four. <laughs> <laughs> what is Wi-Fi? They're like, here's a play. This guy's fucking stupid. <laughs> here's a PlayStation Four game. Just play it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he eats it. <laughs> uh, Amish are are cool, man. I like Amish. Yeah, we all well, hmm. half and half. Yeah, sometimes they're all right. I wish they pay their fucking taxes and do zoning have, fees. Do you have to deal with Amish at your job, too? No. No, I mean, I I don't mean because of water. Obviously not because of that. I mean because of, like, um, you guys do, like... Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a story time real quick. Okay. I just didn't know if you had to deal with going on their property for stuff for other places or anything. No, not really. A, a lot of stuff we just annex, where you want to call it. But, um... Only because... So there's a... Oh, I'm sorry. There's a water tower in a heavily Amish area. Is this Polk? We'll just say no, no, no. Oh, because that's what I was thinking of. Was if because no. remember when you talked about the the water in Polk? Oh yeah, no, that, this one's okay. uh, this one's out in the middle of nowhere, and there's just a tank, and right across the street in the country, there is an Amish farm, and every time, like every once in a while, we overflow the tank just for like chlorine reasons or like I don't know. Whatever else the really the distribution superintendent wants. Just for fun. Just to go yeah. swimming. They say like any time that tank's overflowing, like and they leave and come back, they say they like there's always fences around the <sighs> places with like barbed wire on top of the fences. And they say like you'll see pants ripped up on there and stuff because the Amish people just jump the fences and collect water <laughs> and bring it back to their house. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Hashtag wild I, man, that's awesome. I want to say this is an old wise tale, but someone said they saw like naked Amish people bathing under like the waterfall <laughs> from the tower inside the fence. Wasn't there in the town where I grew up, or in the yeah, you know, yeah, wasn't there Amish people that were breaking into places and killing people? Holy shit, no, I didn't know about that. That's awesome. Um, let me look that up because I could be wrong. I thought there was, or like, an there was like an Amish murder there or something. 
Let me look this up. God, dude, Amish on Amish crime. Sorry, I'll just uh Let's see here. Uh I don't know. I thought there was something. I don't remember. I'll have to look into it. But okay. Um on June in June of nineteen seventy two he is found guilty of child abuse and sentenced to four years probation with mandatory psychiatric treatment. In May of 1974, two years, lo two years later, quote, his son Joey is released from a reformatory after he had been evaluated as being seriously disturbed. So that was his son Joey. Oh, so he passed their tradition down, huh? Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, here's a, here's a quote from an encyclopedia of modern serial killers and tooth. I guarantee that you and nobody listening w is going to expect me to say half of these words. Oh, fuck. Yeah. As crazy as this story is, just, just listen to this. Okay. You ready? Okay. I want, I want everyone to think of the most wildest thing that could happen right now. By mid 1974, Colin, Wait, real quick, real quick. Yeah. Can I have a guess? Yeah, take a guess. He turns, like Leatherface, he turns one of his kids into a fucking shoe. Oh, that's a good guess. Okay, you can continue. By mid-1974, Collinger was reportedly hallucinating constantly, holding animated discussions with a disembodied head that he called Charlie. And he was receiving personal orders from God. The divine orders included demands that Joseph Collinger should murder young boys and sever their genitals, and urged that he confided to his son, 13-year-old Michael, on June 26. When Joe requested Michael's help, his son responded with enthusiasm, Glad to do it, Dad. Fuck yes. Eleven days later... Together, they murdered Jose Colazzo, a Puerto Rican youth in Philadelphia, first torturing him and then cutting off his penis. Huh. Did Hit, they... Dude. But tradition, did they suck him off first? You know what I mean? Come on, give the guy something. There's probably a chance, but him and his 13-year-old son <sighs> murdered a 10-year-old boy and cut his penis off. Oh, I thought you said he was a youth pastor. Oh, Jesus. No. He was a little kid? Yeah. God He was a little Puerto Rican kid. Uh, the kid that was murdered, he was 10 years old. So just imagine how fucked up that is. He's just a little dude, 10 years old, and Joseph and his 13-year-old son, they lure him into an, abandoned, into an abandoned factory. They torture him, they cut off his dick, and then they choke him until he dies. I mean, huh. I'm, yeah, that's... That's ridiculous. That's fucking nuts. And uh, it doesn't really slow down from this point. Uh, that murder happened July 7th, 1974. So this would be his first murder then? Yes. Uh, he, year old Joseph? Yeah. Okay. Um, this next one happens, this next murder, July 7th, 1974. At least he made his first murder the biggest coward pussy one he could do, you know? Or, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, I meant to say that murder happened July 7th, 1974. Oh, okay. Um, after this, Joseph starts getting another idea because he also does something else in July that year, shortly after that first murder. He takes out a $45,000 life insurance policy on his son, Joey, and also his younger son. Jesus. Yeah. Yep, there's some good foreshadowing there. Uh, here's a quote from the Encyclopedia of Modern Serial Killers. Quote, Collinger next set his sights on one of his own children, Joseph Jr. In his first attempt, he named his kid after him. Yeah. And Okay. In his first attempt, Joe tried to make the boy back off a cliff, cartoon style, while posing for photographs. Like, here's the thing. That's not funny at all, but he's like, hey, Joseph Jr., I'm going to take a picture of you. Just keep backing up. Hey, just keep scooting back. Oh, almost there. What? Could I, I, dude? What if he like? It's the thing where you like try and lean on the the leaning tower of Pisa. 
it's like you're trying to push it. Keep going. I almost got the oh. right angle. Just keep going back. How do you try to trick your own son into falling off a cliff while posing for a photograph? Um, after that didn't work. What a fucking pussy. Like, oh, God, this dude's like the, these two that de- like, oh, never mind. Just go on. So after that didn't work, he takes uh, he takes his two sons. Like, didn't work as no, in like he the didn't kid fall didn't fall off. for it. He's like, oh, all right, let's uh, let's just go. I got the picture hey, back to the drawing board. Um, <laughs> next, he takes his two of his sons with him on July 25th to go on an arson run. So they're going to go run around and light places on fire. And he uh, he bungled an attempt to trap Joe Jr. in a burning trailer. He tried to Jeez. lock him in a trailer that he set on fire. I like how this guy's like full-fledged psychopath. Finally, three days later, Collinger and Michael drown their victim at a demolition site. So him and his son drown his other son. The okay. body was recovered by authorities on August 9th, 1974. Question as a suspect in the murder, Collinger was not arrested due to lack of evidence. So his dead son is initially considered missing. Joseph, of course, denies saying he knew anything that happened. And uh, so he doesn't get in trouble. He doesn't get arrested for it because there's no evidence. But he would later admit to drowning him. Wow. Yeah. And I think his son that died was 14. So he has like his 13-year-old son help him kill his 14-year-old son. God, these fucking losers. This is yeah. I mean, uh, it, these it's scummy fuckers. It's hard to pinpoint the ages on uh, on like young victim stuff, but I think that that's what it was. Oh, um, okay. One last note about that kill: the insurance company they refused to send him any money in regards to the life insurance policy. Oh. So that murder that he was trying to get the money for, he gets zero dollars for it. It's like you can't just take out a life insurance policy on your son. And then a week later, he goes missing. Like, that don't fucking work like that. Uh, if only he knew that killing his own son would be 10% luck, 20% skill, 0% insurance pay off the deal. Yo, Joseph Collinger, you brought me into this world, but you're not my dad. Messing around with them drugs, making mom mad. Is that how that Shaq song goes? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a Shaq song. Oh, fuck yeah. If you take me, you got to take my son or else he's like a hot dog, but without the bun. <laughs> Shaq. Shaq's the best, dude. Um, Let's see here. So, yeah, he doesn't get arrested. There's a lack of evidence. Here's a big quote from an encyclopedia again. It is two big paragraphs. So um, I'll break them up. So I'll read the first paragraph. If you got any comments you want to say, you can, and then I'll read the second one. I'll just say it now. <sighs> Damn, I haven't even read it yet, and you already got ideas? He's just like, huh. Tell me how my ass tastes. Oh, <laughs> dude, no. <clears throat> I got to cut that out. Oh, okay, yeah. You know I do, man. Yeah. <sighs> All right, let's go. God damn it. Why'd you even say that, Toof? Well, I thought it was funny. <clears throat> All righty, here we go. I'm moving on. So okay. this, these two paragraphs, these quotes are going to be from the end of 1974 and then into early 1975. Okay. Quote, that autumn, the father-son team began ranging farther afield in their search for victims. So now the father and son are just straight fucking, they're taking this on the road now. They've already Wait, killed, quick. they've killed two this people. This is what I don't get. Yeah. Wasn't the son Joey, like Joey Jr., whatever the hell he would have been? Wasn't he institutionalized for like? Yeah, probably because he was beaten so bad and fucked up. Yeah, he Wait, got. He, uh, why would you only want one murdering son when you can have two? I don't know. I just don't get why he like turned one son crazy. I, I guess maybe he just couldn't turn Joey to be killing people. Yeah, I guess maybe I don't know. just beat him. Because oh, right. sorry if you hear that ballads crying out there. I don't know if you can hear him or not. Uh, So, quote, that autumn, the father-son team began ranging farther afield in their search for victims. On November 22nd, they burglarized a house in Lindenwald, Lindenwald or Lindenwood, New Jersey, but no one was home. At their second stop, victim Joan Carty, she was tied to her bed and sexually abused by Joe Collinger. Keep in mind, his son's with him while he's doing this shit. Eleven days later... 
in uh, Susquehanna Township. I apologize. I'm probably mispronouncing all these. That's in Pennsylvania. Five hostages were bound and robbed at Knife Point. The Callengers, they stole $20,000 in cash and jewelry after cutting one of the victim's breasts. So they just take a knife and cut this girl's titty. Uh, striking in Homeland, Maryland, a Baltimore suburb, the father and son held Pamela Jasky captive in her home, forcing her to give Joseph oral sex at gunpoint. On January 6th, the ritual, the ritual was repeated in Dumont, New Jersey, with victim Mary Rudolph. So this father and son, they're going around just torturing families, may, like sexually abusing them at like knife point. Shit. He's taking his teenage son on the road for this shit. Yeah, and they're traveling because like one was Pennsylvania, the other one was New Jersey. Yeah, one was in Maryland. Holy shit, yeah. Uh, quote, two days later on January 8th, Collinger and his son invaded a home at Leonia, New Jersey, holding eight captives at gunpoint while they ransacked the house. Nurse Maria Fashing, she's 21 years old, she was stabbed to death for refusing Joe's order to bite off another male victim's penis. So they told her, you bite that guy's dick off. She said no, and they slit her throat. God, dude, this dude's so fucking crazy. Like, bite it. But Callinger got careless during the getaway, discarding a bloody shirt near the scene. Officers traced the shirt to its owner, and the Callengers were arrested on January 17th by a joint raiding party of federal and state authorities. Two months later, Michael, his son, was ruled delinquent but salvageable with murder charges dismissed in return for his guilty plea on two counts of robbery. He was placed on probation until his 25th birthday in 1982. Fuck no. So, yeah, that dude's out there somewhere. Fuck no. Salvageable, huh? You know what? This kid, uh, yeah, maybe he was tricked by his dad, but, you know, and he killed about fucking about nine people. Who knows? But, uh -huh. hey, he's a good kid. Look at him. He's got a good future left. Well, well together, they killed three people. Um, oh, yeah, they killed that nurse. Oh, the hostages, they just... They just tied up, abused... Took their money, make them suck dick and leave. Pretty much, yeah. They killed the 10-year-old kid, um, their 13-year-old brother slash son, and then a 21-year-old nurse. So I'm going to assume that the kid got off because he never committed none of the murders besides his own brother, maybe? I mean, he was he was just a young teenage kid, and he was, he'd probably suffer the same life Joseph did, being mentally abused, physically abused, and shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I mean, all, all of Joseph Callender's family later it probably all has new have new names and shit, you know. So who knows oh, who yeah. any of them are, where any of them are. Um, but yeah, t the twenty one year old nurse she refused to bite off a man's penis, and Joseph slits her throat. That's fucked up. Oh, um, yeah. here's a quote from New York Times: A blood stained shirt was left by one of the intruders in Leonia. And that was traced by a laundry mark back to Mr. Collinger, who lived with this family in a cramped apartment above his shoe repair shop in Philadelphia. And that's where the father and son are arrested. Dude, he still lives in the fucking shoe apartment that he's tried to burn down twice and has dick holes in it? <laughs> yes. Um, whenever the police went to arrest him, they're like, okay, we're arresting you. And your son. But he has two sons left, Michael and James. One's 13, one's 11. And they both look alike. So, like, well, fuck, which, which one of the sons was it? So, like, they don't even know which son it was for sure. But, yeah, they end up uh, taking them both, I think. But uh, James, the 11-year-old, he gets released. And then the 13-year-old, okay. the one that helped him with it, is thrown in jail. <clears throat> yeah, Michael. Yeah, this is this is fucked up, man. This is I've I can't believe I've never. How is this not more popular? Like I've never heard of any of this shit. Yeah, me neither. And it's kind of it's only a couple states away, so or a state away. <laughs> um, in Kentucky, his first trial is end in a hung jury in uh, 1975. Why the fuck is it in Kentucky? Um, I think that's where that might have been where some of the where the first parts were taken. None of this is for the murder. Oh, okay. This is for other stuff. Um, but then three months later, his second trial begins, and he would end up being convicted on nine felony counts. So that's four counts of robbery, four counts of false imprisonment, and then one count of burglary. So none of this is like the assault and robbery. This is all, or I mean the assault and murder. This is the other charges. 
And I noticed you foreshadowed by saying he later admitted to his son's murder. Yeah. Okay, so he does. Is it not even during this? It's later on. Right. Yeah, because that'll Jeez. be his murder trial later on. We'll talk about. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, some fun notes about his trial, and I love when they do this. But he testified in his own trial, which that's fuck. always fucking hilarious. So good. And it he, is always so always. fucking good when they do that, dude. And uh, you know what? I'm not fucking crazy. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna represent myself. <laughs> and uh, there's a quote where, uh, well, I'll just read it. Quote. Um, on his own trial, he mentioned that there were periods where he couldn't remember anything, and he told the jury that God communicated with him and often told him what to do. And he also said that he was the son of God and he had previously existed as a butterfly. Yep, he's the first juggalo, dude. And it's, that's that cl- fucking clarifies it. Dedicated Joey. to the butterfly, dude. Dedicated to the butterfly. It took the jury less than an hour to find him guilty. And so he gets 30 to 80 years in prison. That's for the uh, for the nine counts of robbery, burglary, imprisonment. And then his murder trial. That's, Wait, you yeah. said 30 to 80 years? Yes. That's such a weird span. Yeah, it's a very big span. But, I mean, that doesn't even matter because the murder trial. Uh, the murder trial is in 1975 to 1976. Quote, while he waited in jail to begin his murder trial in New Jersey... He began to act out and to try and draw attention to his mental illness. And it was later determined that, yeah, he's mentally ill, but he's also faking a bunch of shit on purpose, too. So, like, don't get me wrong. This dude clearly has a lot of mental problems. But he would, like, put on a show to make it seem like he's even crazier than he was to where it was, like, super fucking obvious. Like, he would just be Uh, sitting there and he would start bobbling his head and just doing all this shit. And everyone watching it is like... Like, no one bought it. They're like, dude, we know you're fucked up, but you're, we know you're doing all this shit on purpose. God. He, he just did the wrestling thing. I'm super. I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm super crazy. Uh. That's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, September 13th, 1976. He's now 40 years old. Quote, he went on trial in Hackensack, New Jersey. Um... <laughs> That's a fucking sweet name, Hack and Sack. Dude, hack and sack. So <laughs> funny. Dude um, the hippies there must fucking love it. Oh yeah, baby, Hack and Sack. <laughs> um, so he's on his uh, the murder. He's on trial for the murder of Maria. There, she was the the nurse, and for taking okay. of the hostages in that home, among other charges. He pleads not guilty. And once again, he acts out in his trial in ways that he had never done before, and many believe that it was just a show being put on for the jury. Um, No one fucking buys his not guilty plea. And at the age of 40 years old, he is found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Okay, good. Uh, Guess what happens the next year while in prison? (sighs) Next year. um... 1977. So I'm not going to guess he kills himself because you said that he admits to the murder of his son. So that has to be later. Yes. So he, it's got to be, he sucks someone's dick or someone sucked his. I'm going to say he, he makes a shiv and forces (laughs) the guard to let him suck the guard's dick. That's actually a super good guess, but he lights himself on fire. (laughs) <laughs> he's just the fucking uh dentures beard guy <laughs> oh yeah the the next month one month later he starts a fight with an inmate and then he starts something else that something else is also a fire so he starts another fire um in 1978 they... Dude, what if he just started all these fires in prison for the insurance money oh <laughs> he's like yeah <laughs> they're like it doesn't fucking work that way bro um, in 19... If I light myself on fire, the prison has to pay me money. <laughs> in 1978, they finally have enough of old Joey here, and they have him sent to a hospital in Pennsylvania for the criminally insane, where Joseph would try and kill another prisoner there. Okay. In the hospital. Oh, yeah. And uh, that same year, at the same hospital, he slashes the throat of another inmate. This was, of course, unprovoked. They said it just happened out of nowhere. Um, but the victim that he slashed their throat, he ends up surviving. Whoa, holy shit. Hashtag wild man. Yeah, hashtag wild man. Unless, I mean, we don't know who that guy was. He could have been a child rapist. Hey, hashtag numb. It could have been Jared from Subway. Who knows? 
Um, uh, yeah. There's also a really weird and disturbing interview that Geraldo Rivera, do, Rivera does with him. Fuck yes. I'll probably play the audio in the episode, but for now, I'll just read part of the transcript of it to you. Do you want to leave it quiet right here for that? Sure. There we go. All right. Uh, I'll just read part of the transcript right here. Rivera, you murdered your own son. Collinger, yes, I did. Why did you do that? He was a sacrifice. I was to murder three million people on the planet Earth to see if I could murder one of my own. At the end of murdering all the people on Earth, I was going to murder my own family and then take my own life and become God. What would you do if you got out of here? I would probably do the same thing all over again. What would you do? Try to murder everyone on the planet Earth. So. Oh, my fucking... What a fucking bitch edgelord. Yeah. Um, for the next five years, from 91 to 96, he spends his life in solitary confinement on suicide watch. I don't know how long he was in the mental hospital, though, before getting sent back to the state prison. But on March 26, 1996, at the age of 59 years old, Joseph has a seizure, chokes on his own vomit, and dies. Score one for the good guys, <laughs> finally. But yeah, in the end, he killed three people, including his own teenage son. The victims were 10, 13, and 21. Uh, he tortured a number of families, a bunch of other people. Just a real big piece of shit, but I mean, honestly, I'm not defending him at all, but he didn't stand a chance. He was yeah. fucked from the get-go. Hey, what was he doing eating pizza in prison? Uh, what do you mean by that? Oh, never mind. <sighs> He had a seizures. <laughs> a little seizures. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. I thought it was going to be a pizza shit. Oh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one last quote. This is from that psychology article. Quote, there have been some disagreement between psychologists as to whether or not he actually had a mental illness, but he did receive a diagnosis as a paranoid schizophrenic before his murder trial in New Jersey. Dude, I... He had psychology is definitely an interesting thing but like do you guys think he was actually crazy i don't i don't think so actually i just believe he i don't know I man i just think he i just think he wasn't the murders the penis sucking the the torture no no it's uh mm. pretty normal i don't think he developed it yeah yeah it's pretty normal everyone he does just it. sounds expressive to me <laughs> um even mr collinger's uh, I'm sorry, I was reading a quote. Even Joseph Collinger, um, his lawyer, he said, like, um, this is what his lawyer, this is about his lawyer, this quote. When Mr. Collinger came to trial in 1976 for the killing of Miss Fashing, his lawyer tried for a verdict of not guilty by reason of insanity. But this is what his lawyer says, quote, I never wanted him to be acquitted. I wanted him to be in a mental institution for the rest of his life. He was sick, he was an evil man, and the evilness was a manifestation of the illness. So even his lawyer's like, yeah, I'm not saying he didn't fucking do any of that shit. I'm saying he's so mentally fucked up that not guilty by reason of insanity. I want him, I don't even want him free. I just want him in a mental institution the rest of his life. Jeez. Imagine your lawyer is like, hey, you know what, man? I You pay me and I'm supposed to be on your side, but... Uh... Call me Benedict Arnold, dude. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, his his son Michael. We don't know where he is. Uh, he changed his name. We don't know his whereabouts. Any of that stuff. So he's out there somewhere. One last fun note about this case. The very last thing we'll say. While in jail during his suicide watch days, because he was on suicide watch and in, in like solitary confinement for like his last five years. Damn, that's hard to believe. He was not allowed to eat to be given any eating utensils because uh, while trying to kill himself once, he tried to swallow his spoon. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So they're like, yeah, dude, uh, you can't have any utensils anymore. But it's fucking, it's SpaghettiOs night. Well, <sighs> sorry, bro. Dude, imagine when he's in solitary confinement. It's like the scene from Shawshank Redemption where like, he takes a rock and throws it through the poster. <laughs> and he's like, wait a minute. Um, and he pulls the poster back and there's just a hot dog shaped <laughs> hole in there uh we dude, think he's been trying to dig his way out of here eh, he, i don't know about that sir it's like no there's a bunch of let me what is that 
No, there's a bunch of spunk in here. He's just he's uh-huh. just fucking. He's only fucking it, dude. When you mentioned uh-huh. hot dog, you remember the hot dog guy in the happening, right? Hot dog guy in the happening. He, he's the guy who's like, yeah, I'm gonna bring some hot dogs for the road. You know, hot dogs get a bad rep. They have a cool shape. They're packed with protein. He just for no reason goes on about hot dogs. Oh no, I don't remember that. Maybe I'll put that clip in because I love Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But yeah, too, if that is the end of the case, brother, you got anything to mention before we shut her down? Huh, I almost wonder if there's a Hall of Fame for this guy, but uh Yeah, he's fucked up. He's he's bad, man. You know, I almost kinda wanna take it through the what if machine to say like if he didn't go through all that abuse, would he almost still have been a born psychopath, you know? Yeah. You know, how much is DNA, how much is created, that kind of thing. But uh I mean he Yeah, this is pretty fucked up honestly this is like a multi-act psychopath because like just the first act alone he was already crazy and then you brought his own son into it yeah it's fucked up like they say a lot of serial killers wet the bed for a long time he didn't have that problem um they say a lot of serial killers uh are violent to animals i don't think he had that problem but he did set fires so that's a common thing too. Now so, I almost don't. I don't know if I. Well, I guess he did kill. So you gotta call him a serial killer. But yeah, he killed three. It's weird that he had the opportunity to kill a lot more, like the hostages, like nine and eight hostages. Yeah. But also. Well, he tried to slice the dude's throat. Also. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He's weird. I wonder what he needed the money for, just because they were poor and they lived in a cramped house. I really don't. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not Cause sure. Because it doesn't sound like he lived a life of luxury. That's for sure. No. But all right. Anything you want to mention before we shut her down, too? If any last words, we'll get to your words of wisdom. Don't you worry. You just have fun editing, man. <laughs> uh, all righty. Uh, Thank you, everyone, uh, for listening. We really appreciate it. If uh, if you enjoyed the show, if you would send uh, send iTunes a five star review about us, if you could leave us a review, that'd be super awesome. Subscribe and listen. Um, if if you could share this with your friends, if you have any friends that have weird senses of humor or into true crime, if you could send them an episode link, that'd be super cool. That'd mean a lot to us. And thank you to everyone that reaches out to us and emails us or just sends us anything at all. On social media, that's awesome. But yeah, our email is brotherscommonplace at gmail.com. You can visit our website at thebrotherscommonplace.com. And there is uh, like a link to contact us. There's also a link to our store if you want to buy a shirt and all that other cool stuff. Um, the D&D podcast is on its way. I cannot wait for that. I know we've been mentioning a lot of stuff that isn't here yet, like the the Chili Cartel podcast. That one is taking a long time because it's very hard to get people over here during the coronavirus to get people to record and things like that. So that'll that'll happen eventually. We got most of it recorded. It's just a matter of editing and all that stuff. But, yeah, the D&D podcast is coming soon. Look forward to that. I think it's going to be called Same Crit, Different Day. Um but yeah, we'll get we'll get more word on that whenever it's more official. Um, but yeah, that's it for me too, for Jeremiah, my boy, my thick bearded, beautiful, beautiful man. You got some words of wisdom for these great people, too? Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, I did the Star Wars one last time, right? Yeah. Okay, so I didn't delete that. Let's delete that. Yes, don't worry, everyone. I uh, I take almost multiple days, many, many hours thinking of these wisdoms because I need to make you all as smart as possible. <laughs> ah, all right, how about this? I'll let you pick, Kevin. Yeah. They're both about Andrew. Do you oh. want chili or old ladies? Oh, I want old ladies, baby. All right. So uh, in case you guys haven't noticed, our boy Andrew's been MIA again. Well, as you know, I live with him and I have to hear about all his weird uh Weird escapades and sexcapades, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. 
So I've been hearing this, uh, and I've been hearing it for almost like 30 minutes at a time. I'm like, what the fuck is that dude? Is he got a fucking hummingbird in the fucking house? Did he turn his air conditioner up? Like what is going on in his bedroom? He keeps the fucking doors locked all hours of the day. Just, I, uh, I found out that, uh, Andrew has been, uh, inviting some old old ladies back to his room and uh, he's been blowing and humming on their vaginas (laughs) to keep it cool during the hot summer he's a good man i think he actually got a cub scout badge for that once yeah i uh (laughs) i asked him i was like andrew kevin told me you got a a cub scout badge for doing that uh (laughs) doing that move that i think you're doing is something sexual isn't it he's like you're fucking damn right I am. Mm-hmm. He's like, those old ladies, they got hot, sweaty, stinky pussies, and I just been blowing on them, just burning them up. And, uh, damn. He's like, Andrew, so what's the badge say, motherfucker? <clears throat> and he says, of course, I named it my fucking self. I call it the Granny Fanny. <laughs> <laughs> that build up, dude. Yeah, that the build granny up. Fanny. For Granny fucking uh, Fanny. You know what? I loved it, though. Um, yeah. special thank you to the hashtag ass hive. Thank you for all you do. Sorry. I haven't been on there much lately, but, uh, we love all you shout out to our boys. The last bandoleros. They've been fucking killing it lately. Moving up in the charts, man. They got some good stuff going. Same with whiskey Myers, our boy, Tony keep on rocking boys. Love you guys. Oh man. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool guys out there. Thank you, everyone that listens, for real. That uh, It's incredible. All right, Toof, anything else? I was just trying to think of some of the older ones. Shout out Daniel. Yeah. Who oh, might be the first always. Fan ever. Australian Daniel might be. Canadian Chloe, that's old school as Canadian well. Canadian Chloe. Even? You know what super bums me out, though? When... um. Like, I, I love having listeners that we know by, like, name or nickname. But it's like everyone moves on eventually or, like, doesn't listen as much. And once you yeah. stop hearing from those people, because there is, like, a handful of them that, that like, actually, like, mean a lot to me, even though even they probably have no idea. And yeah. it just fucking bums me out. So I, I hope everyone still enjoys the show. Dude, what's funny is even just having this, and you get way more responses than I have to. Dude, how fucking lazy and piece of shit I am about responding to people sometimes. Mm-hmm. I can't believe I ever thought Baker Mayfield was gonna respond to a snap I was gonna or a t- tweet I was gonna <laughs> send him. <laughs> oh, they don't even probably see dude, he probably gets tens of thousands of snaps a week. Or I mean yeah. social media stuff, yeah. Yeah, day probably, yeah. Uh... Hey, speaking of Baker Mayfield, look over my shoulder, man. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. He's there. Um but alrighty, thank you everyone for listening. Be good. Stay safe. Laugh at the dark stuff. Hashtag wild man. Fuck yeah, hashtag wild man. Hashtag wild lady tooth. Oh yeah. Actually, I do have something real quick. Hashtag thank you Mark and congratulations. He has a new baby on the way. Just oh, found congratulations, out. Congratulations, Mark. Yeah, he's got a girl on the way. So hell yeah. Ooh. Um. Keep slinging that dick, dude. Sling it my way every now and then, if you would. <laughs> and unlike this story, hashtag treat your kids right. Yeah, dude, for real. This dude is, uh, man, this is a fucked up one. Uh, hashtag Mucklow's dirty pussy. <laughs> hashtag boy oh. pussy. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, what's some old school ones? Pre- hashtag pretzel dog. Pretzel dog, yeah. Yeah. Um. Hashtag Jess Huey in the news. Hope Je- hope she's doing well. Oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Huey Jess Huey Lewis in the news. Maybe I should have said. Oh, I don't there know. There we go. Um. Yeah, man. There's so many awesome people to. I, honestly, I don't even. Whenever we have listeners that we don't shout out, I always feel bad. There's just there's a yeah. lot of like, we got Haley and Heather. There's just so many, man. It's it's hard to. Jocelyn, oh, there's so many, dude. It's hard to do. So everyone out there, we love you, and uh, just keep doing well. 
I'm trying to think like I forget what fucking Adam Sandler movie it is, but like there's just so many names. And like you look at the list behind you and you're almost out of names. Yeah, I'm like, fuck, dude. Just say a name. Say any name. Tooth. Fuck. <laughs> What's that fucking Adam Sandler movie where Steve Buscemi where he's like, Oh, thanks for the phone call. Billy I'm Madison. Just... Oh, that's Billy I'm Madison. So glad I called that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So um, yeah, good night, guys. I'm shutting her down, Tooth. Okay. Oh, I got to hit stop first. Hit stop.